I believe in something greater than myself. A better world. A world without sin. Hi, I'm Amber from Jucifer. We're here in San Jose to uh, promote our new record, La Trichin. We, uh, we knew that we were going to have a French Revolution record for a long time. It was a, a subject that I became interested in probably when I was a little girl. Um, I heard about Marie Antoinette and I, I think the first thing that sparked my curiosity about her was that she said let them eat cake and that was supposed to be a bad thing because <laughs> to me as a little kid it was didn't sound like such a sinister thing to say. Um, but you know I, I really I like history a lot and so does Edgar who's uh, the other half of our band um, and we tend to get really inspired to write music about uh, stuff that we learn and things that we respond to emotionally. So it was really natural for us to write uh, about that particular era because it was something we just both had happened to learn a lot about over the years. And the songs on the record were actually written over probably the last 15 years. Uh, here and there, w one of us would write a song and you know the time just felt right now kind of with the way things are going with the world and kind of uh, our own I guess the place we're at in our career as a band this is our sixth record uh, you can't really do a double album as your first record because <laughs> you know record labels aren't, don't want to do that so um, that was you know the reason why why this topic now well I, I grew up you know see I mean my parents records you know they had all kinds of vinyl albums and they had double records and I, I with a double record you get like you get more art and you get more music so what could be better than that you know um, it was something that we really we knew we would all we would do and we, we may do it again someday you, know? <laughs> you can't do a double record every time but we also have uh, just had a lot to say about the subject and we ended up with 21 tracks and we could have could have even gone longer but then it would have moved beyond what you can press on two records so we decided you know that would be the best way to do it but but we're vinyl enthusiasts so we we really love to have those two slabs the way that we did the liner notes we knew we felt so strongly about the stories that that the songs were written as a response to and we thought that the the music would would make a lot more sense to people if they also knew um, about these events which were so uh, sensational really a uh, dramatic you know really tragic chaotic part of history and uh, it just it seemed like the the songs would uh, would lose a little bit of meaning if people just assumed they're like about us and our life on the road or something because they're not you know they're, it's a lot deeper so it seemed, it seemed like a good idea to do you know for us um, being a two-piece was never something we thought about a, a whole lot. I mean, when when we very first went in the studio the first time as a band, you know, we contemplated whether we needed to to only do what we could do live with one guitar and and a drum kit and two voices, or you know whether and that wasn't something we were comfortable being stuck with. Um, so we decided really early on that we would um, do very different things on our albums and. Uh, for us, the live show is, uh, is more about just sheer intensity and insanity and chaos and, you know, we play really loud and, and, and we're just totally immersed in what we're doing in a way that's very different from, you know, the more cerebral, I guess, kind of aspect of recording. We've been touring uh, except for, except for like, we take a break each year around the holiday season so that everybody can visit their family. Um, we have a roadie with us, so there's three of us that need to see our relatives. And uh, we stop when we record, and other than that, we're on tour all the time uh, for seven years. When we, when we get ready to play a show, it's like we're, we're all wound up and we're ready to be released. And when we release, it's like... It's it's almost impossible to describe how it feels, but it's it's a, a huge rush. It's awesome, um, but it's it is it's like being unleashed. It feels like we're just we we have this ball of visceral energy that we just unleash completely, and and we don't stop in our set. We don't. Um, the the reason we don't is because 
once we're in that zone, it's, it's like we're not really the same as we are off stage. We don't feel like, you know, we can talk to, to the audience or to each other. It's, we can't, the only way for us to communicate at that point, because we're so amped up, is literally, bad joke, <laughs> is through our music. We changed band names every show for the first few years that we were playing. And uh, it was, fault, right? yeah, it's O.J. Simpson's fault. Uh, during the, the O.J. trial is when that name was, was came out of the sky. Edgar was washing dishes in a restaurant and the, everybody was listening to NPR in the kitchen and they were talking about how evil O.J. was if he actually did it, which we all know he did. And <laughs> so Edgar came home from work and said, we should call her Ben Jucifer. And I was like, that's a stupid name. And then I, I thought about it and I said it out loud. And I was like, well, it's really fun to say. And we'll be juiced for tonight, tomorrow, <laughs> whatever. And, it's the and juice. It's, it's, the juice is Lucifer. The juice is Lucifer. I'm sorry. Lucifer. You didn't yeah. go into that part. <laughs> I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks for tuning in to Crippled and Broken. Don't forget to tune in again next week. We'll have an interview with Death Angel. And uh, it's been great being with you. This is Amber from Juice First saying don't forget to turn it up.